Today on Paul's Old Crap, we're going to test out the leaked copies of the Apple Copeland operating system. This project is of particular interest to me as I was a huge Apple fan throughout the 1990s, so hearing about these exciting platforms such as Copeland, Gershwin, and Rhapsody made me want to see the new technology. Unfortunately, Apple's internal management was a disaster. In 1996, Gil Emilio was brought in as CEO to replace Michael Spindler and inherited the giant mess known as Copeland. The Copeland project itself appears to have first come up by that name in around 1994, with delivery promised in 1995. By 1996, it was still completely unusable, so the Copeland project was scrapped in favor of purchasing an operating system. I won't go into too many technical details about Copeland, but the point of the project was to do a ground-up rebuild of the Macintosh operating system to better compete with more modern systems such as Windows 95. A number of new ideas were to be included in Copeland, with more scheduled for later release under Gershwin. Copeland was also entirely PowerPC native. Apple opted to write their own microkernel named New Kernel instead of sourcing out an existing system, as in the case of AUX or Apple Unix, but simply making a newer AUX was likely off the table due to AT&T licensing fees. The three leaked copies of Apple Copeland include versions D7E1, D9, and D11E4. While these are easily found on numerous websites these days, I first obtained copies of Copeland via Hotline in either the late 90s or early 2000s, and served them on my own Hotline server still to this day. In this video, I'll talk a bit about some of the noticeable differences between these versions and what you'd need to do in order to run these for yourself. So to get started on our software demonstration, uh, what I'll be doing is demoing the Copeland D11E4 version of the software. Uh, this is the latest version that was leaked before the entire project was cancelled. Uh, I think the cancellation was... Uh, I think around August of 1996, and the uh, release of D11E4 is i believe june of 1996 so it's it's pretty close um i think there was actually um i've heard that there was maybe uh, a developer release version one that was just about to be uh mastered on the cds um right at the time the project was canceled so this might not be uh the final version that would have been uh, sent out to do uh to the developers but um yeah, this is still, I think, considered like a DR0 version. And um, as you'll see, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's very much unusable. But uh, anyway, so I do have to have two computers running. Now, this version is called the compatibility version. Um, it installs on top of a uh, existing Macintosh system. And it's not as complicated to get running as the earlier versions, but um, we do have a debugger system that will be running. This isn't a requirement, but it will be needed um, because of how unstable the software is. So over here on this side, I do have a Power Macintosh 6100. This is the computer that will be running the Copeland software. So what you will need to do is have a copy of System 7.5 installed. And as you see, I have 753 installed on this computer. Uh, one thing to note, I also had to downgrade the amount of memory. Right now, I have 24 megabytes of RAM on this computer. I normally would have 72. However, Copeland cannot deal with the fact that uh, you might have maybe 32 or 40 or even more than that. So... If you're going to be running any of the uh, the old Copeland uh, leaks on your computer, you need to make sure you have uh, either 32 or 40 megabytes total memory, nothing more than that, uh, or you'll get strange error messages when you try to boot it. So I just happen to have 24 megs in this computer. Uh, in this other computer I have over here, 
This is a PowerBook 520. This, um, well, to run the Power Mac debugger software, you don't actually need to run on a Power Mac. Um, this PowerBook just happens to be the most convenient uh, that also has a direct video output. So this is just running system software 751. Um, I think any variation of 7.5 would be fine for the software. It might even run like 7.1. I don't think it really matters. Um, but yeah, it just basically needs to be a Macintosh. This happens to be a 68040, which works fine for this. Uh, you do also have to make sure you have a serial cable connected between the two computers. Uh, it uses the modem port on the 6100. And on the PowerBook, it's a combo port, but we just basically re uh, refer to it as the modem port anyway. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to open the Power Mac debugger, and we're going to have this open before we get into the Copeland boot on 6100. Now, I believe I've already set this up for the, uh, the proper port. Uh, just for fun, we're going to, oh, um, you might want to, if this is enabled on your copy, like set stop on debugger, blah, 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 you might want to not enable that. Um, I think we're also going to uncheck the stop on code loads. Uh, basically, I, I want it to stop as few times as possible, but uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see uh, how much of a mess this is anyway. Uh, deploy. Well, we'll leave that like that. We're just going to hit OK there. And we're going to go ahead and just open the log window to get prepped for the uh, Copeland boot. Now, if we look back over at the PowerMac 6100, um, so the, the Copeland installer for this particular version, it is an actual installer. Uh, the previous versions, you just had to like drag and drop the raw files onto its own partition. Uh, in this case, the Copeland installer installs onto the same partition as your existing Macintosh folder. So this is my 7.5 install. This is the Copeland folder. So if we look at this, it looks kind of like a system folder. We do have a system file, we do have a finder file, and we do have a bunch of other folders that look interesting. We have this thing, macOS loader, whatever that happens to be. If we look in our extensions folder, we have things that don't really look like traditional Macintosh extensions. We have some printers, and then we have some other weird things. If we look at the hardware support folder, uh, this is kind of like the actual raw hardware drivers that uh, Copeland uses on the back end. Uh, we, uh, this one in particular, ADB server, this is like what controls your mouse movements and your keyboard and stuff like that. So like all of these different hardware modules for, uh, for the actual computer. So uh, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, control, <laughs> zero control panels, that's excellent. Uh, we do have some fonts. These will look familiar. Uh, pretty much standard Apple fonts, I think. A um, couple basic Apple menu items. But yeah, despite the fact that this is like a system and a finder, this folder itself is like it can't boot itself. It relies on having an existing system folder to do that. So... Now, well, I've already got this installed, obviously. To actually boot into the system, what you do is you restart the computer and you hold down the caps lock key. And you'll notice it is a lot different than uh, how the normal Mac startup is. So let's jump into that right now. And there we go. This is, uh, it's, it's actually a really nice uh, intro animation they have here for the, uh, the Mac OS logo. It's, uh, it's too bad they didn't actually adopt that for the later systems, but uh, yeah, here we go anyway. Um, microkernel initialization started. It's mounted our file system volume and loading up all of the... Uh, miscellaneous back-end stuff. 
the boot generally takes uh, maybe like a couple minutes. Um, I've noticed in general, this is a PowerPC native operating system, um, but it is extremely slow on the uh, PowerMac 6100. Um, I think it was actually even slower than if you were to try and run uh, like what we know as Mac OS 8 um, on the system. But I mean, obviously, there is going to be massive differences between the systems. Um, and obviously, this is not a final product. But yeah, it's it crawls. And I think it even does a lot of swapping, too. I've noticed on the hard drive, if I open an application, the hard drive will suddenly be 20 megabytes more full of space. But you can't see where it is. I think it's uh must be some sort of invisible swap that's happening because there's a uh, well, you won't be able to hear it on the audio, but with the hard drive next to me, I can hear it churning away no matter what you're doing. So there's a, there's a lot of activity going on. And okay, so making sure the computer is still live. <sighs> oh, we have a menu bar. It's continuing to load. Oh boy. Uh, one thing to note about this background, it's pretty much what you're stuck with um, for this version. Uh, the appearance control panel that we all know from the actual macOS 8 product, it's not actually in this build. And what's interesting is it was in, uh, it was in previous uh, leaked copies of Copeland, but it was removed for this one. Um, I read somewhere about it being a potential uh, legal issue, which is why it was maybe removed from this one. Um, I think maybe some of the Apple lawyers complained about, uh, hell, I don't even remember what the reason was, but there was some reason why it wasn't included. It was kind of bizarre in my opinion. But uh, anyway, we have just booted into Apple Copeland. Um, it looks pretty much like you uh, remember Mac OS 8 from looking. It's got the little 3D icons for your hard drive and your trash can. Um, one thing you'll notice is the special menu in here is called SPAS. Uh, this is kind of, a, I think this is the internal code word for this particular uh, build. So that's kind of what Apple has been doing for a lot of their uh, pre-release operating systems, is my understanding. So on other copies of Copeland, it's actually got different names up here. So uh, logically, I would assume it is like an internal code name. Um, but yeah, you've got a couple of things that are uh, you'd expect from the Mac OS. You've got your restart, your shutdown, um, you eject disk. Uh, if you try and drag a disk from your desktop to your trash, it really doesn't like it in Copeland. It actually tells you not to do that. Um, in fact, that's one thing I'm going to demo right now. I believe I have a disk here. I will put it in the drive. And we're going to see if it will read. I think it might even be a PC disk. I'm not too sure if it has the drivers for that. Really? Okay, it ejected the disk. I'll try a different one here. It ejected that one too. This operating system is beyond useless. Um, these were double density disks that I was trying, and I think maybe that might be the problem. Let's see if uh, this third disk works. Hasn't ejected it yet. Oh, look, showed up. So that might actually be something I didn't notice before. Um, the disks I was trying to use were 800K double density, and the one that just showed up on the desktop is a high density disk. Uh, it is possible that Copeland will not work with double density disks. Um, that's just a guess, I have no idea. Uh, but watch what happens when you take the disk and you drag it to the trash. Cannot be completed. It wants you to do eject disk. 
If you want to be able to eject discs by dragging to the trash, hop on your left foot, rub your stomach, pat, and then I think the font size made the rest of this message uh, not appear in the dialogue box. So I don't know what the rest of this is actually supposed to be. Um, <laughs> yeah, they don't like it, apparently. Um, that didn't really make it to the production system. I'm pretty sure up until Mac OS, the very last Mac OS, you could still do it by uh, dragging to the trash. Um, just going to go to the finder preferences area here. I don't know if there's actually a font setting. I was going to see if I can uh, shrink the font down to get the rest of that error message. Uh, font for views. Uh, it's already as small as it can be. What about menus? Use short names, no. Folders? No. Desktop? Uh, no. Okay. So unfortunately, um, I don't think there's any way to actually change the font size to see if there um, is any uh, whatever the hell was the rest of that message. But So we're going to go to the spaz menu and we're going to go to eject disk. Come on. All right, and he dejected. So, yeah, that's how they want you to do it in Copeland. Uh, a couple of the things we're going to look at. Apple menu. You'll notice they, uh, there is no about this Macintosh. For some reason, they didn't think to include this in this build of Copeland, which is also interesting because uh, supposedly it is in the previous builds. So for it to suddenly not be in this one, um, I'm kind of curious to know if, like, there was a massive uh, redo of parts of this operating system between the builds that like the one I'm looking at right now and the other leaked builds, the earlier ones. So, I mean, like this is the most basic dialogue. It's, it's odd that it would not be there. Um, but yeah, uh, let's take a look. If we open up the chooser, I can hear the hard drive churning away. It's trying desperately hard to open up that chooser. And we're going to look at our, our debugger is still live and nothing's popped up yet, which is good. Um, it'll spring to life when the Copeland system crashes. I'll hopefully be able to demo that soon. And as you can see, the, the whole graphic system is painfully slow, but I don't know. There's, it just kind of looks strange too. Like this, this entire interface here looks like it's maybe a quarter of the way complete. It's, it doesn't look very nice at all, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, my mouse just froze and the power book has sprung to life. This means I've just broken Copeland. And what is happening right now is the debugger is grabbing all of the information over the serial port. And it's going to just, I don't know, it's going to tell me what the problem is in assembly. Uh, and there's nothing I'll be able to do about it because I don't have the source code for the operating system. I don't know what it's actually trying to do. Um, but you'll see on the debugger screen here, it's reading process information. Um, this will probably just take a few more seconds to fully populate. And until we do something in the debugger, the Copeland system is crashed. Oh, the mouse just sprang to life again. What happened here? Oh, okay. It decided to recover itself from the crash. So in my debugger log window, oh, weird things are happening. Okay, so it's having a serious problem trying to draw this window, I guess. So it had to spit out all of these errors in order for it to make the rest of this draw, which is interesting. Um, oh, shoot. I didn't mean to click the create button. 
I think there was a document somewhere that says you're not actually supposed to touch this button because of a horrible bug, but I don't know if that actually applies to this. I don't know what it's doing. Okay. Oh my God, what is happening? Uh, where'd my menu? Oh, there we go. It just redraws real slow and the debugger complained about something else there. I don't care. Um, let's take a look at, well, there's really not much else we can look at on this thing. Uh, you can't run any Macintosh software on here. For example, we're going to open simple text. Now, this is the version of simple text that was installed with system 7.5 on the hard drive originally. We're going to wait for it to do its thing. It's going. It's going. Hard drive is still churning away. It looks like it's going, but then it'll let you down at the last moment. And it takes so long. Oh, there you go. It gives gives me a weird error sound and then it says unable to run because of a serious error okay is the serious error that you didn't make this operating system compatible with macintosh software i think it might and i don't know if you caught this but my disk used amount changed like 10 megabytes from before and after i opened simple text because I think it said 155 here before. Now it says 145. And sometimes mouse clicks don't register. It's The whole interface is just hilarious. Um, and really, there's, there's not much that I can actually run in this version of Copeland. It gives you three programs, uh, two of which I think actually work. The third one, I'm pretty sure, crashed my computer when I ran it. Um, I do have a couple programs I pulled off of a different version of the uh, Copeland software, and these don't even run in this build. So I think these programs came from D9, and they 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 crashed this build. So I don't know if they just decided to keep rewriting the operating system over and over and have nothing be compatible. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much the only thing we can do is look at the monitors control panel. And, well, we're going to look at the slide master application after this. Just, uh, we'll just give this about 10 minutes to load. Oh, my God. If I had a second microphone hooked up, I'd hold it up to the hard drive so you could just hear it churning away trying to figure out what to do with itself oh my god so if you think oh the hard drive just changed again it went from 145 to 154 I don't know what the hell this thing is doing, but I can tell you it takes like 30 seconds to open the monitor's control panel. So, yeah, now that we're in here, wait, what does the about menu say about CDEV tester? This is weird. I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be. Huh. Maybe it was some sort of interface that allows system seven based control panels to run as a Copeland application. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to close this because we're not going to make any changes to our display. And uh, the menu bar likes to disappear and redraw itself. Oh, and then the disk changed again. It's back down to 145. So, yeah. So weird. I don't know. Uh, we're going to open right now this uh, GX Slide Master. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's just like a basic, uh, I, I suppose we could call it a presentation. 
In about five minutes, you'll see for yourself. Uh, let's wait for the churning to end. Make sure our uh, debugger computer is still live. Yep. Oh my God. What's actually really strange is we haven't had a fatal crash in the operating system yet. Um, although I generally know what triggers them, so I haven't done them yet. Uh, anyway, this is like, uh, I don't know, this is just some sort of basic slideshow that they threw in here to demonstrate uh, Quick Draw GX, I suppose. Um, oh my god. So painfully slow. I uh, got a nice debug menu here with options that I don't know what they do. Maybe nothing. Uh, oh, the response time is so painfully slow to every mouse click. Uh, oh, come on. The Apple menu about Slide Master. And I think we're already at the about screen then, or there is none. Come on, let's go to the home. Oh, what are you doing now? You're drawing stuff on my screen. Oh my god. Something's happening. I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh my goodness. Stop. So, yeah. This is real interesting, but uh, we're going to see if we can stop this. Uh, how do I... Stop automatic. Okay, I think it stopped. You know what? Um, there's other things I wanted to look at that I don't think are even included in this uh, build. Like uh, one of the big things was uh, a whole new redesigned open and save dialog, but I don't think that's even in this build. It's so weird. Um, I wonder if we can get one of a get a print dialog to show up here. The hard drive is just churning away. I like to keep moving the mouse because the moment the mouse stops moving, that means you've basically crashed the system and then the debugger typically kicks to life. Um, uh, this is uh, a fairly basic print dialog, so uh, we'll just go cancel. <laughs> oh damn so i clicked cancel and the mouse stopped moving and our debugger is uh about to tell us something interesting oh man you know if i was an apple developer in the 90s and apple handed me this and said here you go go write some applications for it i think i'd become a windows user to be honest this is uh this is, I mean, I was an Apple fan in the 90s, and I think Copeland is actually really neat in that it's nothing like the previous Macintosh system software, but um, I can admit that it is garbage as a result of poor management at Apple. So, oh, what the hell happened? Okay. Okay. So we're not actually at a major crash here. I think what happened is, hmm, the fact that I clicked cancel, maybe, hmm, I don't know. But the Copeland system is still live. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, quit this application. So, We're seeing, oh, really? So, okay. I quit the application. Oh, 
Well, I got the mouse back. What is this? AE deliver to kernel process error equals no error. So it, it says the error is that there's no error. I don't understand. I don't know. Oh, man. Close. Yeah, sometimes, like, I have to click multiple times. I'm clicking over and over, and it's not deselecting this folder. There we go. It's, I don't know, it's ridiculous. Um, while I have this window open, though, I'm going to mention a couple things here. Uh, you'll see that I have picture one, picture two, picture three. Uh, the ability to take screenshots is there in Copeland. And these are screenshots that I would show you if simple text would work, but I can't. Um, when I took the screenshots, oh, what just happened? Okay. My debugger beeped at me for some reason, but I think we can ignore it. Uh, where was I? Uh, so you can take screenshots with, uh, I think, what was it? Command Shift 3. Um, I did encounter crashes when I did that. However, it did still take the picture, which is good. Um, if we look at, uh, let's go up here to our Finder thing. So we're running the Finder and also we're running this thing called System Process, which is like part of the kernel. And I immediately just crashed the computer again. So our debugger has sprung to life and it's gonna tell us why we should not click that button. Oh, one thing I might uh, note about the D11E4 build of Copeland is you can uh, run it for long periods of time without having your hard drive corrupted. That was a feature that the uh, earlier versions had. And okay, so the problem I have here is command table something or other. So whatever it is, it won't it won't let us go in there. So who knows? Um, another thing that. Uh, Copeland was supposed to have was a great help system and as you can see here they deleted it so yeah uh oh yes I was talking a bit about the uh the folder here um there's going to be documents that I'm linking in the description of this video about getting the install going on your own hardware um, but if you are running system 7.5 and you have this system 7.5 update system file that's in your system folder, uh, you need to drag it out of your main system folder uh, because this interferes with Copeland booting. Um, when this was in my system folder, it, uh, it wouldn't actually boot the Copeland when I held down the caps lock key. It just continued on. So, yeah, can't do that. Um, oh, yeah, we were looking at... Uh, so. These two applications are from the D9 uh, release of Copeland. I'm going to try running this one. I don't know what it is. It's called kernel view. Um, I think at this point of the video, I want to break the operating system because there is literally nothing else I can think to demonstrate in this operating system because there there is nothing else. Like I was toying around with this for a while. Um, as you saw, it will read floppy disks. Um, it also will read CD-ROMs, um, but you can't do anything with them on account of it won't run. Oh, here we go. Oh, I screwed this thing up. So the mouse is frozen. I have an error message showing up in the middle of my Copeland screen. And... Now the debugger is coming to life. So what we're looking at here, so this kernel view was made for the different build of Copeland. So it's complaining it can't load the new libraries from kernel view, blah, blah, blah. These library, I mean, it makes sense if they were doing massive changes in like how the microkernel works. And um, oh, my mouse is back and Assert error status equals no error file errors.c. You know, if this thing could just like make up its mind if it's going to get screwed up or not, 
I don't understand. Um, what happens if you drag that and drag it? <laughs> yep, yeah, that's how you delete text off your screen. You move your window on top of it. And we'll put that there. There we go, all clean. Um, we're gonna close this window and we're gonna go to the file menu and oh if we go find watch this find is disabled because it's not scheduled to appear in dr1 if you really want to try it there's an extension library to turn it on uh fantastic i have not looked into where this might be but like the, f the find option was going to be one of those things that Copeland did really well, and it's it's not even in the operating system. So, yeah. But we're going to click that again. We're going to go into the get info. I think I recall doing this once, and it crashed the computer. We're going to see what it does. My mouse is still moving. Oh. Oh, wait. Access fault, there we go. We screwed this thing up. All right. Copeland system is frozen. I have access fault on here. And now we're going to demonstrate what you might be able to do to get out of this situation because it's not returning us to Copeland. Um, the whole thing has ceased to run. If we go, what am I looking for? We're going to open up the process browser and we scroll down. This is the one that kind of is the active one right now. Um, it, over here, it's uh, it's like, yeah, here we go. Six, five, five, four, five. That's what we show here. It is stopped. Now, what do we do about this? Well, if you try to run it again, it continues to give us the access fault and the Copeland system is still dead. Uh, what you can try doing, so we go back in here and it's got this little arrow icon with uh, whatever it seems to be broken on. Um, I've had luck with this before, maybe not in this exact problem, but if we go to propagate exception, we're gonna see what happens now. Uh, if it isn't obvious, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Um, before last week, I'd never opened this debugger before. I have no idea what it's doing. Oh, something else happened. Unhandled task exception. Oh, the Copeland box is kind of messed up. I hear the hard drive churning. I think it might actually be redrawing my screen. On the debugger side, the process is actually coming back as running. So I think what we actually successfully did is recovered from our crash. And we're gonna just wait for uh, something to happen on the Copeland side. We have our menu bar coming back. Oh, damn. Okay, it crashed again. This is going to be interesting. We'll uh, take a look at what happened here. I don't know about you, but I'm having lots of fun right now. Honestly, like, this is kind of exciting in that my typical experience with Macintosh computers was, was not having uh, to debug one computer with another computer. Okay, we got access fault. Uh, oh, what's happening here? Our graphic system is completely messed up. If we look at the error message, we got like new memory crosses, existing heap sections, graphics client not disposed, invalid heap. And then we got names like Tom and John. Uh, I don't know if those are... Uh, Apple engineers who worked on uh, QuickDraw or something, but that's fascinating. Um, we're going to try our propagate exception again. 
I don't think it's working though. Oh, access fault. Uh oh, it took us to a new area. Um the Copeland machine is still frozen. Propagate exception. Oh, we have an exciting new crash apparently. What's happening here? Access fault. Really? I think we're, oh, we're somewhere new. Okay. Uh, I don't suppose this is going to, oh, what has happened here? We have a new error on the Copeland window. No task to terminate for a cooperative interrupt exception for blah, blah, access fault over here. Everything's breaking, but we're having fun. Come on, access fault? No. Give me something interesting. What's your problem? Propagate exception. Unhandled task. Oh my god, my mouse is working again. Uh... Oh. Damn. We crashed again. I don't think we're going to be able to uh, successfully recover from all of this crap now. <laughs> we we got the system super mad. Honestly, though, I'm actually surprised we made it this far. Um, I was able to kill this thing easily within minutes before. Access fault. Uh, do we have... Nope. Don't have a mouse. Where are we over here? Unhandled task, we're still broken. We have an access fault. And I kind of, before, I don't know if uh, this does anything. Like I was dragging around this arrow, but I don't think it does anything. Cause we still have an access fault. And I tried these other buttons, but I don't know what those are supposed to do either. Uh, And then we've also got like step, step into, step out, step to branch. Uh, we can try these things. I don't think it's going to help us. Of course, without the source code, this thing really doesn't know what to do with itself, I think. Um, Cause the, when this normally um is launched it asks you for the symbolics file and obviously i don't have that um so what we're looking at i think is just straight assembly so we can try all these menus the thing doesn't know what the hell to do uh i don't know if there's actually any way that i can kill these processes Uh, it doesn't have the option there. I wonder if actually, nope, don't have that. I don't know. It's strange. I can bring the kernel to focus, but I don't know if I can do anything with that. I'm just breaking stuff all over. I have no idea what I'm doing. Could not complete your request because your task is running. Uh, hey, my mouse on the Copeland box works again. Oh, we crashed. <laughs> oh, no. I think we've probably reached the end of the D11E4 demo. Um, I, I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to get out of this mess without rebooting the computer. And if I reboot the computer, I don't think there's really anything else I can show you um, because I can just continue to have this thing crash over and over again. And uh, yep, that's still dead. And uh, I don't think, yeah, I don't think there's anything else that I can uh, demo in this. So 
I think we will wrap up the uh, Copeland D11 E4 demonstration at this point. Um, yeah, I don't know. This was quite fun. All right, so next up we have the Copeland D9 release. Uh, this is the uh, tools edition. Um, now this release, I don't think has been around on the internet um, as long as the D7 and D11 releases. Uh, I only uh, recently picked up um, this D9 release. Uh, so I'm not too sure exactly when this was leaked, but uh, the copy that's out there is um, a CD image, which looks like it would have been um, given to some of the larger Apple developers because it also had uh, some programming tools on there, it had MPW, it had a bunch of libraries and documents about uh, Copeland specifically. Um, but what we've got going on here on the 6100 is... Uh, you'll notice there's two partitions. Uh, the copy of D9 requires a separate Copeland boot volume. On your Mac boot volume, the system folder, uh, this is just the same copy of the 7.5 system folder from the uh, previous install. Um, there's a couple differences. One being you have to put a text file that says no Copeland mount in the uh, the name. Uh, in this volume, otherwise Copeland will try to mount it when it boots, and you don't want that to happen because of like possible corruption and strange problems like that. Um, one other difference, though, the system file that's in here, this isn't actually the system file that was uh, part of this system um, from the previous install. It's specifically included on the D9 ISO. Um, it's, it's, it, I guess it's got like a different way of booting the system. And you'll also notice it's got modern OS folder and modern OS loader. What the hell is this? Cause that's not part of the, uh, D 11 release. And yeah, it's, it's basically just a different way of uh, how the system boots. And I'm pretty sure the original D seven leak of Copeland does this exact same thing. So it's not actually an installer that you run, like the uh, D11 release. It's basically just a raw folder that you get on the uh, the developer CD, and you copy these files to your hard drive manually. Um, if we look at the about this Macintosh, you'll notice it says System Software 8.0 D9. So this is uh, talking about the version of this system file. So yeah, it is, there's a couple differences, um, I mean, mainly that version and how it boots um, the, oh, when you restart and how it does this bootloader crap. But other than that, it's just basically system 7.5, I think. So yeah, um, let's see if we close these down, we look at the Copeland boot. It looks kind of similar to, well, except all these weird ass files. I've already booted this once today, um, but this is the first time I've ever actually run uh, the Copeland D9 release. Uh, it's got the, if you look at the system folder, I mean, it looks kind of similar to the other one. We've got the system, we've got a finder, but then we also have finder eight, which is like the actual finder that it runs or something like that. Um, not really much in terms of extensions. Uh, desktop modules, there's really nothing there. Themes, there's only one theme for the appearance control panel in this one. Um, it's, I, I don't know, I thought it was kind of strange. Maybe the D7 release is the only one that actually had all of the themes included, but yeah, I don't think there's any, nope, no control panels. Um, I think most of your other stuff is kind of kicking around in here. I guess these are a bunch of libraries or modules or something or other. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, boot the system up. So as you can see, I do have my debugger system all loaded up with the log window open. 
Uh, and we are going to proceed with restarting. And I've pushed in the caps lock on the keyboard, and this should take us into the proper booting. There we go. So that's the tools edition booting. And you'll notice it does look, it does things kind of similar to the uh, D11 release. Um, so you do get these first bootloader messages where it's mounting the disk and getting to know the C frags folder. I think in the other one, it called it system libraries. Um, this one does tell you a lot more stuff though that it's doing. Um, yeah. And is the mouse working yet? Yeah, we do have some mouse movement. And we're so far so good. One thing I will note on the uh, D9 CD image that's uh, floating around, there's actually a debugger version and non-debugger version. The one I'm running is the debugger version. Uh, I don't really know what the differences are between them. I think maybe the non-debugger version would halt on less issues, possibly. Although it was the one I was trying to run in the first place uh, without success, but I didn't have my debugger system running at the time. So today is uh, the first time I've attempted the debugger version with the PowerBook connected. And... Yeah, this is this is further than I got with my original test. So, um, I don't know. Just having the debugger there might be part of it, or I might have screwed up the disk partitioning. It's it's strange. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we are now in Copeland, and there's a few differences. Uh, the way the appearance is, um, you do have that uh, 3D look to the menu bar. Um, that we've seen in the uh, the other version as well as Mac OS 8. Um, the hard drive icon is not the same. And when you go into it, the folders are all the original System 7 type icon, but the actual, f like the window look is like Mac OS 8. And yeah, it's it's got that same, well, I don't know, it's got a similar effect the way it kind of like, twists as it opens. I don't know how to describe it. Um, I remember that being uh, an option in, uh, I think, the appearance control panel uh, in the actual Mac OS 8. Um, but let's take a look at some of the other things here. Under the Apple menu, we actually have an About This Macintosh box. This is missing in Copeland D11. Um, but yeah, this is, this is interesting. So it, it says we are running a modern Macintosh. Uh, it says we're running 8.0 D9. Um, now, for some reason, it says my built-in memory is 8 megabytes, and the total memory is 80, and I guess it's using virtual memory on my Copeland volume. Now, if we look at this, this here, like our main system software, and then we have Finder 8 also running. So, I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I... Really don't really uh, understand what it's doing with the memory here, but yeah, we're not going to worry about that. Um, and despite the fact that it said we are running 80 megabytes of virtual memory, we only have 54 megabytes used in the disk. So I guess it's dynamically allocating. Um, in previous versions of the Mac OS that are not Copeland, I think it uh, allocated the entire amount if you're using virtual memory. So that's kind of interesting, but, um, everything else is quite similar. If we look at, um, the special menu in this one is called space aliens. Uh, it looks quite similar. We do have this system settings. Uh, oh, I guess that it just opens the control panels, which happen to be empty. So that's quite useless. Um, we do have the Finder Preferences. This was also available in uh, the D11 release. I think all of this is still pretty much the same icon. Oh, I just crashed it. Uh, unbelievable. Ah, so we've got the debugger coming to life. Um, let's uh, see what it wants here. Hopefully it's not a fatal crash. Um, 
when I was testing this out like 20 minutes ago, uh, I'd get some messages in my logger. Oh, wait. Yeah, there we go. So it just needed the debugger to be there so it could spit out all of these errors. So valid item failed for menu something or other. I guess that's... Oh, yeah, because it's spitting out errors whenever I click this. So, interesting. It's like they hadn't programmed this feature yet. So, uh, let's go somewhere else then. Uh, folders. Okay, nothing interesting there. Labels. Uh, oh, apparently they didn't do the labels yet because that is failing in my debugger log. What about miscellaneous? Okay. So that's still there. So there's some obvious things missing from the system. Um, the screen drawing seems to be pretty slow, but the D11 release was also quite laggy in my opinion. Um, other than the screen drawing, the this release seems to actually be running a little bit faster in my opinion. I don't know. So I'm, I'm not I'm not hearing the uh, Power Mac 6100's hard drive churning away whenever I do something, so I don't know. Uh, anyway, we're going to open the appearance control panel. This is something that's not included in Copeland D11. It is still in this version. Uh, however, as soon as it opens, um, you'll see that it only has the default theme. Uh, I don't know if you could copy the themes from the Copeland D7 release and throw them in here and have them work. It's possible. Um, but yeah, for some reason, it's just uh, just the one theme. And uh, yeah, this all seems to work. Standard uh, background stuff. Yeah. Uh, modules. Oh, what have I done? I'm breaking everything. Uh, what? Oh, oh my God. What have I done? There's weird things. What the hell is that? Okay, uh, there's weird things happening on my desktop. I don't know if this was supposed to be something they included. I don't know why this is happening. Uh, shoot. What the hell is this? I don't understand what the point of this would be. Show fruitful. <laughs> Fruit flies by Jeff, Keith, and Tom. Uh, I don't know. Were these guys like really bored one day and decided to do this instead of programming their operating system? Shit, I don't know. Uh, let's revert to our defaults and stop all this. Okay. So yeah, the, the drawing of these fields kind of seems a bit slow to me, but I don't know. Oh, you'll notice this is, uh, they copyright this as 1995. So yeah, the D11 was 96 and this was, I think, mid to late 95, I believe. So yeah, interesting. Um... So far, aside from a couple bugs in the debugger, uh, everything's actually stable. So uh, let's take a look at, I don't think there was, um, let's see. Oh yeah, the find box works in this release, but it does, it's missing from D11. So I, I don't understand, and I don't know if this actually works. If we do, let's type in, whoops, I can't type because I can't see where the hell my keys are. 
Uh, if I search for the word test, I don't know if this is actually going to find anything. So I'm not sure if, oh, what in the hell happened here? My debugger's freaking out. Oh, I've really made this mad. Can I click pause? Come on. Oh, this thing wants to die. My mouse is barely moving. It just keeps jumping around. The debugger's really mad at me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's see if I can get you over the close. Come on. Exit. Oh my god, I think it's still running. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get into the process browser. Ah, team 65546 is freaking out. Come on. There you are. You're running. Guess what? I want you to not be running. Come on, please. Stop. Son of a... Shoot. Okay. Uh, so I think I've really screwed up this system. Um, what I need to do now is uh, reboot the computer, probably. Uh, unfortunately, if uh, we try to get to the reboot menu, I'll show you something that's interesting with this system. Uh, assuming I can get my mouse up there. Let me get up to Space Aliens. Oh, weird. Once I select a graphical element, my mouse suddenly works properly. Uh, watch this. Restart. An error of type minus 1716 occurred. So they didn't implement um, restarting in the system yet. And as you can see on my debugger, this thing is just going to keep trying to search and it's not implemented. So uh, I have to do a hard power down, or actually, let me just see if I can. Uh... Okay, I'm doing a uh, reboot by the power or the keyboard, uh, usual Mac way of doing it. And we're going to try and get back into Copeland here. I think I'll probably just skip the video ahead until it's uh, finally booted up again. All right, so the system has booted back up again. And uh, in the process of doing this, it also crashed my debugger. So I had to reopen that. Uh, let's uh, hop back into the hard drive. I think there was a couple things I was still wanting to take a look at. Um, so we looked at the appearance control panel. Um, oh, this one, this Mac browser. This is an application that I actually tried copying over to the uh, the D11 release. Uh, I can't remember if I tried running this one in my video, uh, but I it wouldn't run in D11, but it, uh, it works in this one because this is actually the uh, release of Copeland that the application came with. Um, this is uh, the way that uh, the open and save dialogues, I think, are supposed to look. Um, it allows you to just keep going deeper in your directory structure. So if we went from there into system folder, into desktop modules, and then we could just like click up through here. So this is different from how uh, a dialogue would be for opening and saving under System 7. And I think this is one of the uh, specific highlights of Copeland that they were uh, talking about in all their marketing material. So, yeah. Um, oh, one thing that's interesting. Well, there's a weird test menu here. I'm not really sure I want to touch any of this. Uh, if we look go to the About browser... They, so it's Macintosh browser brought to you by a bunch of people. Um, and they've got this as, uh, 1994, 1995. So, um, if this is specifically made for Copeland, it looks like the development of Copeland might've even been happening in 
like 1994 and earlier because I'm going to show you something else now. Uh, oh, yeah, here's another bug. Sometimes it won't redraw the background of your screen. So you have to like move your mouse over your icons. Uh, that didn't work. Um, if you do this, they come back. And then if you do this, your icons come back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kernel view. I think this application is the one I tried to run under D11, but it wouldn't because it's this is an application made for this D9 version. And I think I pointed this out before. It's like the fact that some of these programs run in one developer release or not the other. It's, I don't know, it's it's weird. It's like they rewrote complete parts of this operating system so that nothing was ever compatible with each other. But um, yeah, anyway, if we go to about kernel view, uh, this is the new kernel viewer. And this is dated with 1993. So I'm wondering then if they were already creating their new microkernel in 1993 or perhaps earlier for this operating system. So uh, if you read about uh, Copeland and all that stuff, I think they do mention that they knew the operating system was dated by like the late 80s to early 90s. So it might have not been called Copeland, but they were probably working on this um, before 1994, like maybe even before 1993. Who knows? Um, yeah. I'm just curious if one of these other windows will work. Apparently that won't work. <laughs> oh, oh well. Uh... I don't think there's anything else I was going to bring up. Um, the chooser is here. The slide master is here. Uh, whatever this was, I don't remember. Might have been something to do with open transport. Um, we don't really need to look at that, though. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, here's a copy of simple text that I copied over from my other Mac volume. I want to see if it would actually run. Because I, I don't know if this build will run. Oh, damn. Okay, well, the debugger is uh, about to tell me something. So <laughs> it's probably going to tell me that, no, I will not actually run a Macintosh application on the Macintosh operating system. <sighs> what the hell? Extended resource attribute set. We no longer support the... Oh, shut up. Illegal instruction? Go away. Oh, shit. It's happening now. Oh, I've really broken it now. Um, damn. <laughs> oh no yep we're stuck so I suppose that answers my own question of if this operating system will run Mac software that the answer appears to be no uh, but I don't think there's anything else I really wanted to show in this version of Copeland um, if you're interested in seeing all of the other developer files that were included um, you can get the uh, Copeland D9 CD image from various websites online. Um, if you uh, are looking for this sort of software, you probably already know the websites I'm talking about. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of information and uh, like code samples and library files and whatnot. So if you're actually a developer, you might find that stuff interesting to look at. But uh, yeah, as my uh, Copeland system has completely locked up here again, it's uh, going to be a lost cause. I think this will end the uh, demonstration of Copeland D9. Um, there's really nothing else uh, I think there is to show. So, yeah. Okay, so the last version we're going to take a look at here is D7E1. This is the earliest of all the Copeland leaks. 
Unfortunately, I cannot make it run properly on the PowerMax 6100. The problem that I'm encountering, uh, I actually did a bunch of web searching and did find one other person who has this exact same problem, and it was actually on the same hardware. So I have a suspicion that this build of Copeland may only work properly on the Power Macintosh 7100 or 8100 models, uh, perhaps not the 6100. Um, I, I don't really see why it wouldn't work. Uh, the other ones um, appear to work just fine on this hardware, but uh, let's uh, take a look. Right now we're booted into the base 7.5 install, um, like we did with the D9 version. Yeah, so it's just system software 7.5. Uh, like the D9 version, you have the split drive, so our boot volume just has our regular um, Macintosh system software, and then we do have the Copeland volume, uh, which might have some familiar bits from D9 as well. Um, this is inside of the uh, Copeland system folder. We do a get info. Um, Apparently, it's based on system 7.1.2, which I have run before on this Macintosh. Uh, this 7.1.2 was the first uh, uh, Macintosh software that uh, supported the PowerPC processor when these uh, first Power Macs came out. Um, one thing I did notice is, uh, so we've got the D7E1 information here, but it's also referred to as Maxwell. Uh, this I don't know if this was uh, supposed to be the code name for this build because it also has um, there's screenshots online where the uh, the code name that they use to replace the uh, the special menu uh, it's I think it said like Sun and Fun or something like that so I don't know if Maxwell is supposed to be the uh, like the internal project name for this or what the deal is who knows. Anyway, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to reboot into uh, Copeland and I'll just basically show you how far it gets until it halts completely. Uh, we got the debugger system all ready to go, as you can see over here. Uh, one thing I will note about this system, um, if you don't have your screen resolution on the Copeland machine set to 640 by 480, uh, your screen will probably go blank before it even got to the or like before it gets to the part where it will halt on anyway so the first time i tested it, i was running in a different resolution um yeah the screen just went blank i could still hear the hard drive churning around the background so uh yeah i reset the screen resolution to 640 by 480 but of course it didn't get anywhere anyway um i'll show you that right now so we'll just restart and i will activate the caps lock So the boot screens look a bit different. It skips the boot volume because I got the no scarecrow mount file in there. Does some other stuff. And this is basically the end of it. Um, you can see the debugger has now activated. And this is basically what happens. It just says access fault. So on the, uh, the Copeland machine, it just says welcome to new kernel and then that's that's the end of it. So if we hit OK on the access fault, let's see what the uh, debugger brings up. Oh yeah, this is also the problem. The debugger loses the connection with uh, the 6100. Uh, the mouse cursor here has these strange little uh, arrows on there. And it's going to sit like this until it basically just times out. Uh, and basically the, uh, the symptoms of this problem that I'm having here, um, yeah, it was, oh, let's see what it says here. Yep. Connection has been lost. So this exact thing has happened to someone else. And that leads me to believe that it's possibly just the fact that I'm running a Parmax 6100. Uh, Maybe it just doesn't like it. So 
I don't know. That kind of sucks. And yeah, without the uh, connection to the debugger, um, I don't think I'm able to do anything about this system. Uh, I did try just for fun, um, pulling some files out from the system folder and whatnot, trying to see if I can make it go anywhere, but it just made things even worse. So uh, I wanted to get this running for this video, but unfortunately I don't have a 7100 or 8100 Power Mac. So uh, at some point in the future, I might uh, see if I can pick one of those up. But uh, yeah, unfortunately this is as far as I could get with this one. Yeah. In the near future, I would like to grab a Power Macintosh 7100 or 8100 to try the D7E1 build with, just to see if my theory about the 6100 is correct. One reason for this project was to document all relevant Copeland information into a wiki page, so if you're interested in trying Copeland out yourself, take a look at the link in the video description. Thanks for watching.